Today we'll be kicking things off by going over Starship's current status as it nears its 15 click flight. Then we'll discuss Crew-1, the next manned dragon mission, debrief last weekend's launch and other Starlink updates, and then finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. On last Friday's episode, we spoke about Starship SN8 being short a Raptor engine. Well, later that night, she got one back, SN36 taking SN39's place, and Lab Padre's cameras captured it being lifted under the skirt and into position. As of the 26th, SpaceX Director Nick Cummings said that there are 50 Raptors currently assembled. We were expecting another static fire of these engines on SN8 to happen this week, but road closures were scheduled and then canceled, and Elon took to Twitter to inform us that they are having some challenges with high winds. And it looks like Sunday could be the day. We are also expecting a nose cone cryoproof test of its liquid oxygen header tank used for landing burns sometime after, perhaps the following day on Monday. Once all that's complete, I suppose we can then expect one more static fire, but this time using the header tanks. But with all that being said, I wouldn't expect the 15 click flight to happen anytime in the next couple of weeks. SpaceX will take as much time as needed to set themselves up for success the best they can. A notum with the FAA has been reissued to allow for further ground testing through the end of the year because SN8 isn't the only Starship there is. Nick Cummings also said 9 and 10 are in production, but we know parts for Starships up to SN14 have been spotted as well, and not to mention the Super Heavy booster. The high bay gantry crane that will stack said booster is now on site too. And as much as I don't like ending bits on bad news, it sounds like the Starship presentation this year has been cancelled. When asked about the presentation, Elon tweeted that it will probably be this week in the form of a written piece on SpaceX's website. And at the filming of this video, that piece has not yet been published. Oh, I'm fine. It's just that life is pointless and nothing matters and I'm always tired. Moving on to Crew Dragon news, NASA held a live Crew-1 mission update on Wednesday, providing us with some more insight concerning those Falcon 9 Merlin engines they've been having issues with since their last attempt to launch GPS-3. These engines were experiencing early startup behavior and so the rocket was doing the right thing and aborting the launch. SpaceX Vice President of Mission Assurance, Hans, Hans, explained that they were able to replicate the anomaly at their test site in McGregor, Texas, and found that the issue was caused by a coating of red masking lacquer, left over from the build process that had blocked up the relief valve line in the gas generator. So it was a really great find in that sense. Uh, and allowed us to uh, to fix something that is very subtle uh, but can can have obviously some negative impact on the engine operation. SpaceX found the same problem with a number of engines built around the same time, a few of which were installed on the boosters of Sentinel-6 and Crew-1. So those Merlins have been replaced, and now NASA and SpaceX are targeting November 14th at 7.49 p.m. Eastern Time for liftoff of the Crew-1 mission, which I gotta say is a lot better than the 2 a.m. time slot they previously had scheduled for Halloween. If this new T-0 time holds, the capsule will reach the space station in eight and a half hours, which is the shortest amount of time possible for the capsule. Uh, the, the next day, if we go to, uh, to Sunday, the 15th uh, Eastern time, it's, it's back to the normal, it's like a 27 and a half hour rendezvous. The commander for this mission, Air Force Colonel Michael Hopkins, has volunteered to transfer his commission to the Space Force, which will make him the first astronaut of the new military branch. He'll be sworn in during his stay in the nest. All right, let's switch over to Starlink and debrief the most recent Starlink mission. On Saturday, SpaceX launched their 15th flock of Starlink satellites into space, successfully releasing all 60 into low Earth orbit, bringing the constellation's tally up to just shy of 900. This also marked the 100th completed mission for SpaceX. In the spirit of Halloween, SpaceX gave us a little fright when one of its cameras on the drone ship, just read the instructions, wobbled a lot more than what we're used to during oh. the landing. What happened? <laughs> what was that? What was that? But she made it back to port in one piece, as you can see here in Greg Scott's picture. Good job, Booster. During the stream, it was also brought to our attention that the Ector County Independent School District in Texas will be participating in Starlink's pilot program due to their rural location and the problems that entails for remote education. In 2021, 45 homes in the area will receive access to Starlink, and an additional 90 households will be plugged in as Starlink's capabilities continue to grow. As of this week, Starlink is in its public beta stage of testing. Emails were sent to qualifying participants that previously signed up on their website, most of them being from the northwestern region of the United States. So yeah, hey, I wasn't selected to participate either, so don't come whining to me, because here's the thing, it's a beta. There will no doubt be connectivity issues and whatnot, 
In fact, to better manage the high expectations for the service that is in its infancy, SpaceX is calling it the better than nothing beta test. The emails from the Starlink team are quoted as writing, expect to see data speeds vary from 50 megabits per second to 150 megabits per second in latency from 20 milliseconds to 40 over the next several months as we enhance the Starlink system. There will also be brief periods of no connectivity at all. Another reason the rest of us shouldn't lose sleep over our rejection is because the service right now isn't as cheap as many were expecting. At $99 a month, with a $500 upfront cost for the kit that includes the terminal so you connect to the satellites. Take everything! But hey, if you're still feeling depressed and alone, you can always download the new Starlink app and pretend you're important. Available for the desperate on both Android and Apple. And finally, our next SpaceX launch to enjoy is going to be the GPS-3 mission mentioned earlier. It's got a new liftoff date primed for November 4th at 6.28 p.m. Eastern. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. For the first time, NASA has found trace amounts of water on the sunlit surface of the moon, specifically in Clavius Crater, located in the southern hemisphere and on the side visible to us here on Earth, which is slightly more obvious when given the discovery was made from Earth using the world's largest flying observatory. Now keep in mind, we're only talking a very small amount, equivalent to a 12 ounce bottle of water trapped in a cubic meter of soil spread across the lunar surface. So don't pack your swimsuit if you decide to take a vacation to the moon next summer. Typically, water discoveries in the cosmos are assumed to have been deposited by comets, because, you know, ice. But NASA seems to think the water could have been formed by the interaction of energetic particles ejected from that big glowy thing at the center of our solar system, otherwise known as the sun. Regardless, it means that the moon's water may not be limited to its polar regions, and therefore could provide the Artemis program with the support needed for long-term mission opportunities. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I want to thank my eccentric members and patrons for supporting my channel. If you enjoy watching these videos, why not sign up to receive access to more? Join us using the links in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to support local SpaceX contributors. Have a normal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed.